My name is Caroline. I'm a cotton producer and we also have a cotton gin and warehouse here in East Georgia. I was able to join my family farming operation and it really attracted me to get into farming because of the process of preserving the land, being a steward of the land and creating a live product that had so many practical applications and uses to support daily life. Georgia is a great place to grow cotton because of its weather. We have a long enough growing season and the soil. We have a lot of sandy soil and some clay, but it's well draining soil and that's good for growing cotton. Usually to begin each crop year, we will do a soil sample to check the nutrients of each field. And with that, you know, what needs to be added, lime, phosphorus, potassium, things that really benefit establishing a crop. And then you go to prepare the fields, then depending on the land itself and what you're planting, you might do one of two ways. You can run a disc harrow, which you'll see the big disc, and chops up all the dirt and makes it a little softer. You can come through and put a raised bed, which is just kind of a little bench almost, for seeds to go in. Or you can use something called a strip till, which has something that will slightly harrow the land to soften it, and the seed will be planted directly into that row. Sometimes the best practice is for different land, because you wanna be sure that the seed doesn't get too wet. You wanna do everything you can to help that seed germinate. So the seeds are planted with a piece of equipment. It'll be pulled behind a tractor that has seed in little hoppers, and it will drop a seed at a designated kind of length. After it's planted, within a few days, the seed will germinate from under the ground, and you'll see a little sprout pop up out of the ground. And it will begin to grow and put on leaves, and the cotton plant puts on squares. Those are gonna be the flowering buds, and the term of a cotton plant is a square. And each square will turn into a flower, and so the next stage is you'll see a, a flower, it will be white, and then it will turn purple, and then the flower will fall off and a little baby bowl will be left, and then that bowl will start to grow, it will be green, and it will be filling with lint, and then eventually it will start getting darker the closer it's ready to open, and it will start cracking open, and that's usually in the fall, and that's what you're waiting for is those bowls will open and then you'll see the lint and the seed inside. Cotton is a very interesting plant in that it can respond to its environment based on the heat, the water requirements, and a cotton plant can conserve its energy to still be able to produce later to protect what it has. And that's something I think is really interesting about cotton. The general life cycle of a cotton plant can be around 150 days from the time the seed's placed into the ground until the time it's ready to be picked. Cotton's typically harvest around October, November, and that's as you're getting to the end of the life cycle of that cotton plant. The bowls are starting to open, and you want the bowls fully open and you see the lint fluff out. And then you'll have a cotton picker come through. It has like little spindles or little teeth that as it goes through each row, its little teeth will spin around and pull the lint out of the bowl. When we're harvesting cotton, we're not digging up the plant. The plant stays. When we come through with a cotton picker, we're not picking the cotton by hand. We're just using spindles, so we're knocking it off. And we try to leave trash and leaves and bowls and burrs because you don't want them to contaminate your sample. So that makes cotton less worthy when you sell it. Nobody wants it like that. So the rest of the cotton plant, the stalk and the empty bowls and the little branches, that is left in the field. You have two different types of pickers. Some of the newer models will actually create a module within the picker. So it's pulling just the lint, which also has the seed and sometimes some parts of the plant get in there too. And it will go and build a round module. It will be wrapped in plastic. and held right there in the picker until it is dropped in the field. Or a conventional type of cotton picker where it's a basket at the top and you see all of the seed cotton and the lint is in the basket and it will be deposited to something we call a module builder 
what kind of looks like a loaf pan in a hydraulic press that presses it down and then that's covered with a tarp to protect it from the weather and it is deposited or left in the field until it can be picked up to be ginned, which is something with cotton harvest is cotton can be harvested and it can remain in the field for a period of time before it goes to be ginned. A lot of times after cotton is harvested, there's a piece of equipment that will come through, be pulled by a tractor that will pull the stalk out of the ground and chop it so it will go ahead and break down. It will put that plant material on top of the ground to begin decomposing so you get that organic matter breaking down the soil and that also helps with erosion control over the winter. Before the Industrial Revolution, cotton production was more of a cottage industry where you had smaller plants because everything was done by hand. Modern equipment and technology has really enabled farmers to work the land faster, harvest faster. Weather's a big factor of farming and so when you have time to work and you can work faster and more efficiently to bring that product to market which is being used at a faster pace. I love the variety of farming. It is never the same day twice. You will often find that if someone is a cotton farmer, they are probably a farmer of other row crops. And that's because we rotate the crops. Primarily our three major crops that we produce are yellow number two corn, peanuts, and cotton. And we will often rotate those three and it helps with pest, weeds, and fertilization. George Washington Carver found that rotating crops by not doing cotton on cotton and having other nitrogen fixing crops into the rotation saw a big increase in yield for cotton when it was mixed in with other crops. So often you'll find while cotton could be a farmer's primary crop, they are also farming a variety of other crops.